Judges chapter 2. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass, when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bochum, and they offered there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did in, for Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance, in Timnath Hares, in the mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash. And all that generation were, and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam, and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them, and yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but they went a-whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them, and they turned quickly out of the way which their fathers had walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge, and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge, for it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass, when the judge was dead, that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers, in following other gods to serve them, and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, Because that this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it, or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. What we have here in chapter 2 is we have a recitation of the sort of history that these people are living with and what the problems are which were foretold by the Lord long before these people even actually came out of Egypt that if they didn't do the right thing, they didn't clear the promised land of all the people that were there, there would be problems. And what happened basically was there arose a generation that didn't know Moses and that didn't know Joshua. And what we don't have is any idea as to whether or not the people who were alive at that time actually taught the people what happened or whether they taught the people and they really didn't care or know. We see that in our own lives. Sometimes we have children that we teach all the right things to and it just seems like they don't care. And that's how it is sometimes. They want to go through their own problems and to find out they will do that. The problem we see for the children of Israel here is, though, that they, in this whole time of the judges, they compromised their religion. There were some people that were totally apostate, and there were some people that were sort of okay sometime, and then when they got 
everything was peaceable and there was lots of money and lots of food and all the rest of it, they worshipped these other stupid gods, stone and rock and whatever. And then when they were chastised by the people around the, them, they were beaten up on or whatever, then they'd remember the Lord, they'd repent a little bit, and then they'd get a little comfortable again, and then they'd forget the Lord. And it was just one constant cycle of this. These people never seem to get on track and stay on track. The two gods that they tend to be worshipped by the Canaanites were Baal, B-A-A-L, and Ashtaroth. And Baal was a supreme male deity. He was the god of rain and lightning and fertility. And Ashtaroth was the goddess, supreme female goddess, and she was the goddess of love and fertility. And uh, their entire, entire worship was pornographic. Uh, open relationships, physical, intimate relationships on high places where people gathered around to watch uh, some sacrifices of babies and other people uh, to these gods on occasion. And Israel, the people individually, seemed to find this very attractive. And they wanted to participate. Some of them thought, well, you know, we had this, this god uh, who wants us to be intelligent and have integrity and all the rest of us isn't as fun as this God that wants us to be naked and running around and doing all of these gross things. That was it. And there, in any society, there are people like that. And no amount of intelligence, no amount of honor, no amount of integrity will change how some of those people are. They will simply do that because they feel like it. Now, we need to understand also that the judges were not judges in the normal sense of the word as we think of judges. The actual word that was used to translate into judge in the time of the translation of the King James Version actually, if we go back to the original Hebrew, means a military hero or somebody who was a local leader. And what we have in the book of Judges is stories about the military heroes during this span of years that were all collected and put together. And so you'll see that most of the judges have some kind of military prowess or physical prowess. Not all of them were the most wonderful, brilliant, religious people on the face of the earth. Some of them were like Samson. And others, there were a few others who were really remarkable individuals. This is not a great time. When we hit Ruth, then things seem to start to get better. 